Doctor says Islamic State is recruiting 24 hours a day in all 50 states. Is that the object? I mean, why is he telling us this for? Why would the FBI director put out a story like that? He says hundreds of people are consuming social media efforts to either draw them overseas to join the extremists or if you can't come, kill where you are, FBI Director Comey said. Uh, then why aren't you stopping it, sir? Why aren't you hacking into these individuals and arresting them, sir? What are you doing this for? You're letting them recruit? Why are they not stopped from recruiting? The biggest stupidity I've ever seen is that if an American citizen leaves America to join a terrorist group, why are they allowed back in? Why is their citizenship not, not immediately withdrawn? Because we're not a sane nation and we have an enemy within who wants them back here. And what else are you going to conclude? Any other conclusion? Either the presidency is filled with morons or they want them back here. Is there any other conclusion you can come to? No. The biggest question is, is Merkel insane or being blackmailed? I don't understand how this woman who was a, centra, a centrist, center-right, is not only admitting in hundreds of thousands of Syrian Muslims who are rioting in the streets of Germany, they're suing the government for more welfare. I swear to God. I found the article. I said, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. They're suing Germany for not giving them more welfare and faster in Germany. Demanding it. Most of them are from Chechnya, no less. By the way, just what we need here more, more. It's unbelievable to me. The whole West has lost its mind, and it's, you know what. Are we running out of time already in this stop set? Yeah, I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. When the scientific community is telling us if we do not address the global crisis of climate change, transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to sustainable energy, the planet that we're going to be leaving our kids and our grandchildren may well not be habitable. That is a major crisis. <laughs> the big lie. Already the, the world's coming to an end. In the, uh, in the 70s, we're all going to die from uh, an ice age. These are the same zero population growth uh, people. These are the abortionists. They're worried now about a planet. They're not worried about the unborn, but they're worried about a planet. They're, we're killing the planet. He flies around the country. And, uh, aside from the obvious hypocrisy, the science doesn't support it. And nobody's worked harder than I on saving the environment his whole life. Uh, you know, my bona fides are really good on that. My plant collections are in major herbaria around the world. So don't lecture me about the environment. Nobody wants pollution, but worse than pollution is the pollution of the truth put out by communists like Bernie Sanders and the Pope. That's the worst pollution on the planet of lies. Pollution. Nobody wants pollution. We'll leave the planet uninhabitable for our children and grandchildren. Standard, standard fare that they would give to an ignoramus who doesn't know the reality. All legitimate scientists. 98% of legitimate scientists have exposed the fraud of global warming. How about reversing it on them? Did you hear what I just said? 98% of legitimate scientists not collecting government checks to do such fraudulent research. 98% of legitimate scientists disagree that man is destroying the planet. How's that? Why don't you use that as an argument? In any case, this is Michael Savage. I'll be back for another two big hours with God's help and your listenership. And I invite you to be here, period. End of story. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. It's our number two of the Savage Nation. And we have such bad news that I'm not going to report it anymore. I want to talk about something else. Maybe later we'll talk about the Chinese space weapons and how they're getting ahead of us in space. But pay no attention to that. Instead, focus on global warming. And the fact that we're, we're racist because we don't let in millions of illegal immigrants the suckers dry. Right, right. Focus on that. Well, that only certain lives matter. You idiot. How could you dance and say their lives matter and your life doesn't? What is wrong with you people? Liberalism is a mental disorder. And
And the, the problem is probably they have low dopamine levels, which is why they're always titrating themselves with drugs. I saw an article this morning in the Wall Street Journal that was very interesting. Normalizing dopamine levels in the brain may reduce alcohol cravings. It says drug, again, drugs that normalize dopamine levels in the brain can reduce alcohol cravings in people dependent on drink. Blah, blah, blah. Well, okay, again, drugs, drug peddlers. But the fact is, is that there are foods and natural supplements that can increase dopamine levels in the brain, which will reduce anxiety and reduce your cravings for alcohol and drugs. And I want to, I want to give you that for a few minutes because many of you, oh, there's a good caller, Mike, I'll get to him in a minute. And many, many people don't know that. They think they have to take drugs for everything because dopamine is in charge of our pleasure reward system. Dopamine allows you to have feelings of enjoyment, bliss, and even euphoria. Hillary Clinton should spray the audience with a little dopamine. Maybe they would smile a little bit more. Right now, she's the anti-dopamine candidate. Whenever she appears, people's dopamine levels drop. But too little dopamine can leave you unfocused, unmotivated, lethargic, and even depressed, and that's why you vote Democrat. Now, what are the symptoms of dopamine deficiency? Think of a, a slacker in the morning. Think of an average Hollywood idiot in the morning. Fatigue, apathy, cro procrastination, low libido, sleep problems, mood swings, hopelessness, memory loss, inability to concentrate. Typical liberal has low dopamine. And then they become apathetic and lethargic because they have no motivation to eat and they starve to death in mice. And by the way, in people, some people are low in dopamine compensate with self-destructive behaviors to get their dopamine boost. So that means they abuse alcohol, sugar, drugs, shopping, video games, sex, power, or gambling. And I guess all of us are guilty of it to a certain extent. We're always trying to feel better, and we try to do it our different ways. But there are many healthy ways to raise dopamine, to boost your dopamine levels. And what are they? Well, let's start with the foods. They're the easiest. Dopamine is made from the amino acid tyrosine. So eating a diet high in tyrosine, that's a single amino acid, will give you one of the building blocks needed for dopamine production. So what are the foods? Almonds, apples. I should pause on the almonds because one of my sponsors is, is nuts.com. I, I frankly snack on nuts throughout my show. I, I love nuts. I get a high magnesium kick out of them. I'm probably seeking the dopamine as well. Almonds, apples, avocado, bananas, beets, chocolate. I don't eat chocolate. Coffee. I'm going to have one in a minute. Fava beans, don't eat if you're... It's a very interesting story on fava beans. They're very popular now, but if you're a certain ethnic group, you should never eat fava beans. I did this in 1993 in a book called The Skeptical Nutritionist, where uh, it's well known that certain ethnic groups lack the ability to detox fava beans, and they develop a disease called fava bean hemolysis. They actually bleed internally from them. Would you believe it? I'll tell you the ethnic groups in a minute. You may be one of them. The good stuff now for the not to lose track here is dopamine boosters, green tea, lima beans, oatmeal, sea vegetables, sesame and pumpkin seeds. I'm eating them right now. Turmeric, watermelon, wheat germ, right? Foods that promote the, the production of, um, of dopamine. Foods high in natural probiotics, such as yogurt, kefir, and raw sauerkraut, can also increase natural dopamine production. But I would warn you against sauerkraut. It's very high in tyramines, which can produce migraine headaches, so watch out. And I don't want to give you more and more about it, but there are dopamine supplements that you can get now after the foods. Ginkgo biloba, L-theanine, L-tyrosine, and others. So we won't go into that. Did you know that crafting hobbies of all kinds, knitting, quilting, sewing, drawing, photography, woodworking, and home repair bring the brain into a meditative state? Did you know that's why people do it? Did you know that these activities increase dopamine, ward off depression, and protect against brain aging? I started to do watercolors again this last two years. And when I really get into a hole and I don't know which way to go, where to go anymore, I don't want to run it, I don't want to bicycle, I don't want to go to eat, I don't want to drink, I go to my little table and I start to paint some silly little pictures. And you have to force yourself to, to learn these things. Listening to music can cause release of dopamine. Did you know that? Listening to music can cause... I probably release dopamine. I would guess that people who listen to my show who are addicted to me, now that I think about it, my mellifluous voice, which is God's voice, not mine. God gave it to me. It's not mine. I don't own it. It was a gift. I could have sounded like Frito. I mean, it was but for one gene. I could have been one of those who sounded like this. I'm smart. I'm smart. I know about the Constitution. 
I know about the founding fathers. I'm smart. But instead, God gave me a voice that produces uh, a feeling of goodness in people. They feel dopamine flowing throughout their, their brain when they listen to me. It's a gift. It's a gift. Let's go to some of the callers on the Savage Nation because I got some great ones waiting to get online here. Mike on KSFO in my hometown of San Francisco. What's on your mind, Mike? I want to thank you for that. what you just talked about, the dopamine. I'm a recovered alcoholic of nine years, and it just makes sense. The music, the almonds, the apples. But what I initially called you about is uh, I went to your, one of your first shows at the Oakland Airport Hilton. Wow, it, that was in 2002. That was one of my first shows. Do you remember it at all? What was on? What was going on on that day? Yeah, it was the Paul Revere Society. You had it at the at the bar, right there at the Hilton. <laughs> and then I went to the one in Dublin. But you got oh my God, yes, at the um, the uh, the Marriott in in Dublin, I think. The community center, and uh, it was a dinner, and it was great. And you got to do Bernie Sanders when you come around. You know, I hope I can still channel. I don't know if Bernie Sanders will still be on stage by uh, April. Something tells me uh, his shelf life is a little limited now because he's doing too well. Something tells me they're going to feed him a polonium knish before then, but I hope not. They'll invite him to dinner. He'll have a polonium knish. That'll be the last you hear of him. They'll probably ship him to Russia. So, uh, look, when the event comes up, I'll tell people more about it. I'm just six months ahead of myself. It's not till April. I got a, Do you remember that event in Oakland at the o Oakland Airport Hilton? Do you remember the bodyguards I had, the, the six Samoan guys? Do you recall that at all? No one remembers that. I had six Samoan guys. They were each two to 300 pounds. They stood in front of the stage with their arms crossed. They didn't need weapons. Their physical being was their weapon. They were great. I lost touch with them. I don't know how to, how to reach them. That's too bad. Okay, my, my friend, stay in the line. You're getting a free gift today. Government Zero goes out to you. I can't wait till that book hits the shelves because I'm holding my fire. I need the people listening to the show to remember that date, October 27th. It's a long time in coming. They're going to buy it on their own, but I'm going to actually ask people to do something special and different this time. I want them to go out, and I want them to clean the shelves. we got to send the message that we do know what's going on. We do read. We are literate, we do vote, and we count, and we want to convert people who are ignoramuses, who don't know what Obama's doing, don't know what the liberal agenda has done, do not understand who those dolts were on the stage at the Democrat convention the other night, have no idea what they'll do to this country if one of those idiots is elected. 855-407-282. We got the Bernie calls. I don't know if I can answer them. I'm going to try one more. I can't channel Bernie. I told you my dopamine levels are too high. I've been eating too many pumpkin seeds. I woke up at dawn. I don't know what it, what's wrong with me. You know, it's like the old Buddy, Buddy Hackett joke. I got to tell it again. I've told it many times. Though. He was a comedian from the 50s. I was a little boy. I used to watch him. I laughed hysterically. Loved this guy. He once did a funny joke. He said they enlisted him in the Army. They sent him to Fort Dix. They put him on Army food. And he woke up, he had no indigestion. He said for the first time in his life, he had no indigestion. So he went to the doctor at, at the, in, in the military and said, doctor, something's wrong with me. The doctor said, what's the matter? He said, I don't feel any of these symptoms. The doctor said it's because you don't have indigestion. He thought he was sick. He had been eating his mother's heavy Eastern European Jewish food his whole life. And he thought indigestion was a normal result of eating. <laughs> I thought it was one of the funniest things I ever heard. I love practical jokes like that. I also loved, I remember when I was a kid, I'd be bored in school. Now that I'm drifting off into nostalgia, you'll have to forgive me. I used to get so bored, I would bring little pamphlets and books to read with me on other subjects. I couldn't take formal learning. I couldn't stand it. My mind just couldn't take it. So I used to read other stuff, popular mechanics, popular science. I don't know what else I was reading. I would read why I like Boy's Life. I liked, uh, even in those days, I liked uh, guns, guns and Ammo. Ooh. No, I used to love the gun magazines, but there was a magazine that had like practical stories in it. I don't remember what it was. And they tell a story about a man who every time he bent over to tie his shoelaces, in those days they had shoelaces. That's something that was once, once existed, a shoelace. In those days they had shoelaces. The man bent over, every time he bent over to tie his shoelace, he had a fainting spell. So he went to one specialist after another. It cost him a fortune. Every doctor, a neurologist, an ophthalmologist, a brain specialist, other than a neurologist, a specialist within the brain, 
and everyone gave him different advice. 